So today, Finn and I are gonna be out here looking for some plants to make tea out of. A few of the ingredients that we use for our tea comes from things that I grow in my garden, but a lot of the stuff comes from just the woods around us. And so today we are out looking for some plants that we are almost out of at home. I come out here and I collect these plants and I take them home and I dry them and put them in a big mason jar. And then we use that throughout the year to make tea, whether it's just you know a cup of tea for enjoyment or a cup of tea for a medicinal reason. And so too, when you're out foraging for wild plants, it's always good to have a couple of really good books. You know, that way, if you're not sure what something is, you can look it up. Two of the books that I highly recommend, um, one of them are The Plants of Southern Interior British Columbia and the Inland Northwest. This is a really good book. I mean, it's thick, you know, over an inch thick, lots of information, lots of different plants. Um, and one of the things that I do is when I find plants that I'm not sure of and that I, when I have to look them up, I just take one of the leaves and then I press it into the book on the page that tells me about that plant. I mean, there's all kind of plants as I go throughout this book here. So this one is a really good one. Another book that I highly recommend is The Lost Book of Herbal Remedies. Um, it is by Nicole. She was on a loan. This is a really great book. We use this book a lot. And of course, it still has plants pressed all in it as well. But this is a good book. Um, it wants, so this book here, it tells you, you know, about the plant. This is just for identifying the plant. It doesn't really go into the medicinal properties and stuff like that of the, of the plants. But Nicole's book here, it really goes into, you know, what that plant is good for, you know, how to make the tincture, how to make the salves or the oils, ointments, things like that. Um, so this, this is a great book. It's got really nice pictures to, really nice pictures to identify everything in. So these are the two books that I keep with me. That way when I find my plant, if I'm not too sure of one, I have good options to check it out. Just make sure when you're out foraging for wild plants, you really know that plant that you're getting. You know, don't take any chances if you're not too sure about it. So make sure you have some good books so you can identify the plant. If you're still not sure, take the plant back home, do some research before you decide to use it. You ready to go start looking for plants? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. I know where mushrooms are. You know where mushrooms are too? I might. You might know where some mushrooms are? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then Finn wants to look for mushrooms. So we're going to be looking for mushrooms as well. Let's get out of here. Go find stuff. I'm always ready to get out of here. You're always ready to get out of here? And then maybe we'll find some new fun plants as well because I like to identify plants. Every plant. Every plant I like to identify because you don't learn if you don't identify. So be on the lookout for the plants. You gotta watch where you walk so you don't step on anything. So, so Finn has one of the plants here we are looking for. We're gonna go down here where we got this from, but this is self heal. This is a plant that Clay and I use in our nightly tea almost every night. And so we're gonna go take a peek at this plant and I'll tell you more about it. Stick that in your basket, buddy. So this here is self hill This produces small, spiky, purplish blue flowers. You can look on the flower here and see that the upper lip is like a light purple and it kind of functions as a hood. And then the lower lip is like a different color and it's more whitish, kind of more like a whitish blue and it's fringed. Self heal is part of the mint family and it does have a square stem that's slightly hairy. And as you can see, the leaves are opposite on the stem. So it is a perennial plant. Um, it can grow anywhere from four to 20 inches tall. They're distributed all over the world. Their habitat includes anything from moist soil prairies to woodland borders and open fields, meadows. This plant's both edible and medicinal. You can use the entire plant, but the flowers, stems, and leaves is what's most commonly used. This plant is useful for treating a variety of things, anywhere from treating cold sores to normalizing blood sugars. Research has showed that it self heal induces cell death in cancer cells, and that means it can slow down tumor growth. It helps your body fight infections. You can use it to treat minor cuts, burns, and skin wounds. Now, a couple years ago when I was out looking for self heal, I ended up getting stung in the face by a hornet, and so I took this 
took this plant, broke it off, and used the juice from the stem and put on that hornet sting, and it really did take away most of the pain. So this is a really great plant to have on hand for insects bite and stuff like that. Or if you're out in the woods hiking and something, you know, you get stung or you end up getting a rash, poison ivy or something like that, you can take this and rub this, the juice from the stem onto your bite or your ear, onto the bite or the irritated skin and it helps it a lot. You can make teas to treat sore throats. You can use it for seasonal allergies. And you wanna harvest the flowers when the blooms are open. Make sure that you leave some of the flowers so they'll produce fruit for the next year. You can dry the whole plant and just leave in a cool, dry place until you're ready to use. I think we have enough steps off here. Finn's tired of picking self heal already. I am. <laughs> I'm ready to pick mushrooms. Mushrooms, yes. Yeah, so we're not in mushroom habitat. We got to go into the woods over there. We're gonna look for mushrooms. That's what I want to do. I know, I know. But let's pick self because there's just so much. So Finn and I were sitting here taking a break, and I keep smelling mint. And I see that there's wild strawberries all around us, but I found some wild mints. We're gonna pick some of that too because it makes really great tea. Mint is a perennial that grows from anywhere from one to three feet long. It has green opposite leaves and it has a square stem. The, re the leaves can range from one to three inches long. They are toothed and they're covered in tiny little hairs. They do produce flowers and those bloom anywhere from mid to late, late summer. The flowers don't produce seeds though and plant spreads by an underground rooting system and it spreads really, really quickly. So you don't wanna have this anywhere near your garden. So when you're out picking this, you wanna make sure that you don't pick at all because you wanna leave some so it can continue to spread for the next year. It is antibacterial. You can do all sorts of things with it. Um, you can make teas to treat, you know, indigestion. Um, you can make oils that you can use for headaches and migraines. You can use the oil for soothing irritated skin or for itchy skin. And it also numb when you get bit by an insect, it will numb the skin. So you can take some of this. If you're out in the woods and you get bit by an insect, you can take some of this and just really scrub the leaves up really good and rub that onto your insect bite. You can make an oil for this for using for sore muscles and pains. And it's also known to be treat, used for treating, you know, arthritis and gout in an oil form. You just take that oil and rub onto your joints and it's supposed to help alleviate that pain from the arthritis. Smell it. Just crush up one of those leaves and smell that. It feels woody. Yeah. I was like, man, how you can chew it and make your breath smell better. I'm not saying that you have bad breath, but. I do have bad breath. <laughs> Clay and I drink a lot of tea, especially in the wintertime. And you can just crush this up and make, um, you know, mint tea. All that mint. Mm -hmm. So we are going to go and have a fill day picking mint. Good job, Finn, wanting to go this way and go through the woods. Mint. There's like a gazillion. No, you don't want to go through the woods because you're. Uh, what's a good word for it? Hmm. What? Crazy. You're crazy. You can also use mint in things like candles, soaps, lotions. You can make chapstick out of it, lip gloss out of it. Uh, really, the options are endless with mint. Pulpery. You can make pulpery out of it. There's some over here, too. Yeah, I've made mint extract out of it to use for cooking. I've made peppermint schnapps out of this. Look at that one. Wow, that one's good. I've made peppermint schnapps out of this, so uh, mint's always a really nice thing to have around. And Finn just made a really nice find here. What'd you find, buddy? Um, some little strawberries. If you want a strawberry yet, first. There you go. They're not ripe right now. Not. You can identify them like if they have three leaves um, and they have like a shark toothed edge and um, they have strawberries on them. They have strawberries. What else? What do they feel like? What's the leaves feel like? A little bit like sandpaper? Almost kind of like hairy maybe? Yeah, tiny, hairy teeny, sandpaper. tiny little. Turn the leaf over. Let's look at the back of the leaf. And yep, the same. back of the leaves lighter mm -hmm. than the top. The top screener. Mm -hmm. It's a little strawberry right there. 
see how it tastes. Go ahead. There's Wild strawberries. Uh, I'll get the other one. That one has a couple of bugs in it. This one probably does too. You'll be fine. It's kind of like a lemony. Um, what are those little candy things you get that like are sour? The dad likes so much. Sour Patch Kids. Yeah. That's what you think it does, tastes like a Sour Patch Kid. But not exactly. <laughs> tastes a little bit like Sour Patch Kid though. <laughs> so these are actually little strawberries. The most of the ones that you see, especially around our house in Florida, um, well, when we're at our house in Florida, they're actually not real strawberries. They're called mock strawberries, and they almost make like a little glob. It's like a spongy red glob, very, very seedy, and they don't taste like anything at all. But these out here are actually wild strawberries. It has the little strawberry hanging from it, and they um they actually have a really good flavor. All right, we're headed up to the woods see if we can find some mushrooms now, because that's what Finn wants to do. All right, so we're mushroom hunting now. Looking for, what kind of mushrooms are we hunting for, Finn? Um, beliefs, if you can, um, morels. A little bit late for morels, but you might find one. Beliefs and morels. One pop, one or two popping up, but um, it's really um, time for beliefs here, so that's what we are going to be looking for. So a little bit dry still where we're at. So we're going to walk around through here and see if we can find like an area where there's a stream or a little marsh and see if we can find some. A little bit more damp area is what we need. Okay, I found our first mushroom. It was probably not an edible one. It's on a tree. Maybe she'll have to look it up here. Hold on. Ew, what's under there? It's a medicinal. I just smushed a bug. You smushed a bug? It's a medicinal. It's a Let's see. What does it look like under? Mm. White. Let's see. This one it's good to have a book all the time. Right. We're gonna have to have a stick and knock this thing off. Like a hard stick, just a I don't have it in this one. Let's take it back. Oh, we didn't even bring a knife with us. I'm gonna go show y'all the big one over here. I don't know that basket there, Mom. Uh, ooh, that's a really cool one. I found a really cool one over here. But look at this beast of a mushroom. Doesn't look like that big right now, but it's pretty big. Here's another one. I'm gonna try to get it off for you. <laughs> There's a stick going through this one. Let me grab the other books. Okay, I'll be right here. I'm gonna find a stick to beat one off of it off. Hmm, where's a good, where's a good beating stick? Maybe after I'm done with this, I can beat my brother. <laughs> oh, perfect one. I have to break those two things off though. Okay, let's go and see if it works. It's not really working that well. As I planned it to do. Ah. This one's a little slimy. Like it just rained. Damn it. Do you see this mushroom? Let me try to beat it off with this thing. Oh, oh, got it. I got it. There's the mushroom. That's a big one. Hear that? I don't know what that thing is. Maybe an eagle? Maybe a little eagle? I'm gonna keep these separate because they might be different from each other. Got it. Is that bugs? Kind of as big, is it? I don't know if these are edible yet. I'm just picking them. Wait until mom gets back. 
Okay, here comes my mom. So we found these um, mushrooms, and I don't know if they're reishi, reishi, I'm not to say it. Um, I've never been able to identify that mushroom. Um, I've just, I don't know, I've never been able to identify it. And so we're gonna take these back to home. Ouch, mosquitoes are after me. Um, we're gonna take these back home and see if we can do a little bit more identification on them. The ones that grow on the trees, I don't think we can eat, but hmm? we're still looking. We're still looking. Oops, we look at plant sometimes to identify here. Oh my god. She wants to identify every single plant. Probably, probably some that she already knows what they are. Mushrooms in here. Mm -hmm. Find in the book to learn more about it. This little plant right here. What? Well, read it to me. Hmm. Look, well, read it to me on your phone. I want to see if I can and see it. if it's interesting. Let's see it in the book. Elk weed is what it's called. This plant right here. See if it's closer to another elk weed. Elkweed is a perennial wildflower that can live up to 80 years. Isn't that crazy? What if you step on it? Well, it will and it will develop an eight foot tall flowering stalk with hundreds of flowers. The blossoms are greenish with purple spots. Interesting. So this little plant here is called trail plant, and it would they used to use this plant when they were tracking convicts or lost people into the woods because when they step on it, it would show you the way that they go. I mean, I guess it still would today, but... Um, so, green on one side. It's white on the other. And dents really easy, shows marks. So, like, this is what will happen. Pluck it to put in my book. This? No balance at all. This is called... I think it's pine drop, but it's also it's nicknamed Coyote's Arrow. Hmm. Interesting. It's like a nasty slime ball. No, I feel it. It's not nasty. It's just like wet. I'm gonna have to like cut the tip off of it. Okay. Well, I know that they're they're really edible or anything, but you can cut it if you would like. Ooh, look what it looks like inside. Didn't look that bad. Mm -mm. Didn't look that bad. Oops. Says someone before they eat it and get poisoned. Doesn't look that bad. Let's eat it. We're not eating it. So Finn's picking him some fur tips. Some. Some. Mm-hmm. This is not actually a lot. You need like a, about this much of it. Yeah. You can make a syrup out of them. Um, and it's really good. It's very good. It's very syrupy. <laughs> it's very, very piney. You just need just a little bit. But um, he likes it. So he's gonna pick some of those. Can you help me pick these? So these here, pretty little flowers, look like daisies. That's what they are. They're called oxeye daisy. And you can actually eat the leaves of these. The young leaves are very sweet. They're really good. You could um put these in a salad. Um, when they start getting, when the leaves start getting bigger, they get a little bit bitter, um, but they're, they're really good. Sweet. That one. And the heads of these, you can kind of use them like dandelions and make dandelion, 
instead of dandelion wine, you can make oxide daisy wine. So we're gonna be picking some of these oxide daisies and take it home and uh, maybe get a batch of wine going. Just gonna pop the tops off these and put them in my basket. So one of my favorite things I probably collect is from this tree right behind me. This is an elderberry tree. Right now there's no berries on it, it's just the flowers. And so we're going to be collecting some of these flowers. The flowers on this smell so amazing. I absolutely love to make tea from elderflowers. Now the elderflower bush can grow up to 12 feet tall. It has smooth bark that's green when it's young and then it turns brown when it ages. So the leaves on this tree are opposite end compound. They have 5 to 11 leaflets per stem. The flower blossoms are dense heads of white to cream colored flowers. They can get really big. These here on this tree right now are pretty small, but they can get anywhere from 6 to 12 inches across. Their flowers are in clusters and each little flower has five petals on it. Once the flowers go away, the berries start forming and some of the berries already are started to form on here. The, belt, the elderberries turn black to a dark purple color when they're ripe and they hang in clusters. The flowers bloom anywhere between June and August and they go pretty quick once they bloom. The uncooked berries and other parts of this plant are toxic so make sure you dry or boil, boil your berries before you use them and always make sure you're using ripe berries, never use green ones. You also want to dry the flowers before you use them. So elder flowers and elder berries, they can help fight the severity and duration of colds and flu. They help your, support your immune system. They can help with allergies. They're really high in vitamin C. They contain antioxidants. They reduce inflammation. They can detoxify your liver. And they also help reduce anxiety and stress. You can use the flowers here, which is what I'm gonna be collecting today. You can use these to make a great tasting tea. You can also use this as an eye wash. You just make your tea and let it cool and then you can wash out your eye for conjunctivitis or, or eye irritations. You can make this into a really delicious syrup. You can use make it for a salve for inflammation. You can make tinctures out of it and then you can make some really yummy drinks for this. You can make cordials and cocktails and even wine with elderflowers. Can you, you can treat muscle sprains by diffusing the leaves and oil and then you just massage that into your sore muscles. During cold and flu season time, I always have a tincture made and we just take a dropper full of that tincture every day just to prevent flus and colds. But if we do feel like something's coming on or we do have a cold, then we just take the, take, we still take that dropper full, but just take it two to three times a day. And that really helps lessen the severity and the duration of those colds. I 100% believe in this. This is something that I always have you know I take it clay takes it I give it to my kids they take it the elderberry tree does have some look-alike so I'm always make sure that you know what you are picking this is yarrow it's in the aster the daisy family and a fun fact about this is legend says that that Achilles used yarrow in the Battle of Troy to stop the bleeding of his soldiers wounds by making a poultice out of this all right, so yarrow is a woody perennial plant and it has feather-like leaves. That's kind of the most distinguishing point of yarrow that you're able to identify it by is the ferny leaves. These can grow anywhere from one to three feet tall in full sun to partial shade. The leaves are arranged spirally around the stem. The flowers on this bloom from late spring through fall in my area and they last a really long time. It also makes a really good dried flower if you're wanting for dried flowers for your house. The flowers can range anywhere from yellow to white to pink and red, although out in the wild I've never seen anything other than this color. In my garden I have pinks and oranges planted, but out in the woods when we're walking around I've never seen anything other than this white. You can use this whole plant, leaves, flowers, stems, roots and all, but as the plant gets bigger, it does get bitter. The flowers are the most bitter part of it. So you can leave, you can use the leaves of this to make a poultice to relieve pain. It's really good to relieve toothaches if you have a toothache. It has blood clotting properties so it can stop bleeding. It also can re reduce the duration of fevers and colds and it also helps to relieve stress and anxiety. This is one of the plants that when Clay and I have our nightly tea, we put this in our tea every night. Um, so today I'm just going to pick the leaves and the stems and the flowers and I'll take it back and dry it and then I'll just put it in a pop top jar and as we want some we'll just take a few pieces out and throw it in our tea so when you start picking yarrow if you're looking at plant books it always says that a look-alike for this plant that is poisonous is water hemlock or poison hemlock 
all hemlocks are poisonous. You really want to stay away from those. But the only defining character between the two is just the white umbel shaped flower head. That's really the only thing that makes these look like. And any type of a poison hemlock or water hemlock, it's growing in a complete opposite area as this. They like very wet marshy areas. As far as yarrow, it's on dry hillside here. So since these two plants prefer different growing areas, yarrow likes dry, hemlock likes wet, you will very rarely find these two growing together. But just make sure you have a good plant book and you know how to identify the plant before you start um, using these plants as teas. You just want to make sure these are good and dry before you stick them in your jar because if they have a little bit of moisture left in them then it will make your whole jar mold. So I've got a good start on my self heal and my mint. I've got a lot more to go. I have yarrow and elderflowers waiting to be put on the dehydrator. I hope you enjoyed the video. Grab your book, grab your basket, and head on out to the woods and see what you can find. I'll see you on the next video.